So we're going to discuss stop signs. And in Winnipeg, we find stop signs. Every community that you ever may drive through, there's going to be stop signs, and you have to know what to do to keep yourself from getting a ticket, from getting in an accident, and driving predictably for the people around you. So the first thing with a stop sign is, what is a full stop? And some people have the misconception that you have to be still for three seconds. You have to be still for five seconds. You know, they pull up a random number. The truth is, a full stop is achieved when your tires are completely motionless and your car is still. So, say if you were in a situation where your tires are motionless but you're skidding on top of ice as you go through the intersection, that's not good enough. Your car has to be completely still, your tires have to be completely still, that is a full stop. Now, if you do hold it for three seconds, that's not going to be a problem. You can hold the stop for three seconds, that'll work out just fine. Uh, you could even hold the stop as long as five seconds, although that's really stretching it. But the bottom line is, make sure you become completely still. And I'd rather you sit there for one extra second than ever not quite fully stop as you just slow to near zero and take off again. So you do have to make sure that you do full stops. Now, there's different types of stop signs. Uh, sometimes you're going to come up and you'll have a situation where... There's a stop sign that looks like this. And if your stop sign looks like this and there's no rectangle below it, what that means is look out. Other people don't have a stop sign. And maybe it's one side, two sides, three sides. But other people do not have to stop. So you're going to have to do really good checks before you leave. Now this other type of stop sign, we could really change this word. Instead of saying three-way or four-way in some provinces, it says all-way. And what it means is everyone should have a stop sign. So barring, you know, someone having run one over and it's laying on the ground, everyone should have a stop sign. And for those reasons, you're always careful, even when it's a four-way, to make sure that everyone's doing their own full stop. But we're aware at a four-way or a three-way where everyone's supposed to stop, that the first car to arrive should be the first car to go if everything's going the way it should. So in this case here, I come up, I'm at a two-way stop. These cars can go right through, these cars can go right through. So my job is to really make sure that I'm being safe with my checks to my left and my right. And if I can see that it's safe after my stop, I simply take off and do my maneuver. Maybe I'm turning left, turning right. If I'm turning left, I turn just before center. If I'm turning right, I stay within three feet of the curb. But the bottom line is I've done good checks before I leave because they can go right through. And if your sight lines are hampered, you can further creep towards the edge until you can see far enough before you decide to leave. However, if we stop relatively far back, but you could see in every direction that it's totally safe, we do not want to come up and do another full stop for no reason. If it's safe to leave, we should be leaving. Now in this case here, we've got a situation where everyone has a stop sign. So if you're the first car to arrive, you don't have to be able to see 100 meters down the street before you leave. You just have to know that you're definitely the first car there, and even if someone was going to run the stop sign, you can see far enough, and then you can continue on through. So at a four-way, first to arrive should be the first car to go. Now, where do you stop when you come up to an intersection that's controlled by a stop sign? And the handbook tells us there's three places. If there was a stop line, so if on the ground there was a line indicating your stop line, that's where you'd stop first. In Winnipeg, we don't often have stop signs, uh, stop lines for stop signs at residential streets. Most often you'll see a sidewalk, or there won't be a sidewalk. If there's a sidewalk, even if it just touches the road on one half, whatever half it might be, or if they're uneven, you always stop for whatever comes first, whatever side of the sidewalk attaches to the roadway first, you would stop in good time. We would then look for pedestrians, before creeping to the edge to finish our maneuver. If you could see there was no pedestrians or cars from here, your sight lines were very good, and it was safe, you could just leave and do your maneuver from this position right here. Now, if there is no sidewalk at all on either side, we then simply do our stop. If I'm turning left, I go straight up to about here. If I'm turning right, I would follow the curve and stop in a position around here before the edge. This gives me great sight lines, so I'm not saying race up to the very edge, slam on your brakes and hope that you stop in time, but do go past the, where the metal pole is inserted into the ground, that you have reasonable sight lines before you choose to leave. So with that, 
just know that where the metal pole is inserted into the ground does not represent that that's where you must stop. It is stop line, sidewalk, or edge of roadway. So hopefully all these tips about stop signs will help you and we can stay safe at intersections. And just remember, if you see a rectangle from far away, that means all traffic should be stopping.